Aloha, this is our Hawaiian Volcano Summary for September 19th, 2024. Kilauea is erupting on its Middle East Rift at Nepal Crater, now in its fourth day. And over the past four days, the eruption has gone through four different phases, which is typical of Middle East Rift activity. While there is a lot of changes, all of this is happening within a national park, and there is no increased threat to people living down in the Lower East Rift Zone. Uh, the four phases are noted by the USGS here. We had some pre-eruption intrusion of magma. And then what happened is on the very first night of September 15th, there was a very short eruption from 9 to 10 p.m. The second phase was the resumption of activity uh, the following day. The third phase was when we saw fissures opening across the floor of Nepal Crater and start to fill that crater with lava. And really, that fourth phase began yesterday afternoon with a new crack opening up on the upper rim of the crater and pouring lava into the crater as well. So those are the four phases. We can show you what that actually looked like. Here is the very first phase, which is that initial one-hour eruption with two small pads of lava erupted just west of Nepal Crater. Here is Nepal Crater. Makapui would be back in this direction, and Pu'o would be under this cloud in that direction over there. So we're looking to the southeast or so. So the very first phase was very brief and was still degassing when we saw the second phase emerge and reactivate with lava flows from the upper fissure that poured down, sent a first stream of lava into Nepal crater. And then in that next phase, opened fissures on the crater floor. Those waned after a few hours. And so you see here an intermediate phase with the lava uh, not flowing very much until it reactivates yesterday afternoon. And this was the lower of the two initial fissures from the very first day that is now putting up lava in this giant river that's pouring over the cliff into the crater and sending lava flows across the crater floor itself as indicated there. Well, here is a USGS view of that lava falls that was created, a cascade of that river over the wall of a crater into the lower pit there. A pretty spectacular and dramatic imagery coming out from this phase, this fourth phase of eruption, which has also been the most voluminous. And the USGS has noted that with each successive phase, the volume and rate of lava coming out has increased. So here is a reverse angle of this latest phase with a fissure up and west of Nepal Crater, pouring a river down into the crater floor. And all this dark material you see is a new lava flow as it was photographed early this morning. To show you this in a map sequence, here's a first phase at two paths on the left. And we'll go through to show you guys as it opens up to the right, that first flow coming down towards the crater, and a first pad of lava on the crater floor. Fissures continue opening across Nepal crater floor. The, the flow rate decreases, but still oozing out and putting flows across the crater floor until the reactivation of the original vents with the highest volume floods into the crater and creates the lava falls and paves the crater floor. Our latest thermal image looks as such. You can see that the hottest spots are at the actual vents and the open channel itself. But there are some pads of lava still emerging from the lower fissures on the Powell Crater floor. And you may see some smoke and webcam images from some vegetation burning in this area. Briefly on monitoring signals, we can look at the tilt meters at Sand Hill and see that while the Halemaumau area is still deflating, it's doing so at a slower rate. The South Caldera, indicated by the green line here, is still deflating quite quickly, which means that the magma is leaving the summit area to feed the Middle East Rift eruption. And right now, that feeder system is not showing any indication of having slowed down or stopped, which means the eruption likely has some time in it still, uh, how much it's impossible to tell exactly. 
So that's up at the summit. If we go down in the Middle East rift by the bend by Mana Ulu at the escape road, this is a side of the recent intrusions in July and August. We don't see quite as much change there. It seems fairly stable after the recent intrusions. And further, past the eruption site, down rift at Pu'u'u Crater, we can see the azimuth towards the rift here is still decreasing. And so it seems like the pressure that was building underground that might have been deforming a larger area around Makapui and Nampal craters now has been relieved. And so the swelling that you were seeing around Pu'u'u has been relieved a little bit as well. So that's the story on Kilauea's Middle East Rift, and we'll just have to wait and see what happens next there. Uh, on Mauna Loa, there have been very, very few earthquakes. It's been fairly quiet as the volcano reinflates. And the deep earthquakes perhaps are continuing, but still at very slow rates as well as we track that. So business as usual on Mauna Loa, and we'll keep track with Kilauea as she continues erupting. And that's our Hawaiian Volcano Summary for this week.